How can you quickly and easily correct your log footage without using LUTs? Now, if you've never heard of LUTs, a LUT stands for lookup table, and they can be great. They can really help speed up your workflow when you are color correcting or even color grading. However, they are not the be all and end all when it comes to getting the correct saturation and contrast within your image. Log footage needs correcting as when it comes straight out of the camera, it looks very gray, flat and washed out. And that is because the camera is capturing as much dynamic range in that image as it possibly can. And when you use a LUT, it acts almost a little bit like a Lightroom preset, although not quite the same. But what it does is it gets you to a starting point so that you can then make tweaks to get the desired look in your image. You're always going to need to make tweaks to the final image, one, even using a LUT. Even though sometimes people do think, whack a LUT on top of your footage and that's it, done. That's never gonna be the case. You can see here in this side by side that it does make a huge difference just by adding the LUT straight on top of your log footage and then adding the LUT and making a few tweaks as well. The final image looks completely different and we get a far more natural looking image once we have made those tweaks. However, a LUT is designed to speed up your color corrections or your color grades. It does make it a lot easier, however, you can get some great results without using LUTs as well. So what I'm gonna do is jump straight into Final Cut Pro, which is my editing software. However, if you use Premiere or DaVinci or something else, the the workflow will be fairly similar. Now, I am no color specialist, no color grading specialist. I don't know a huge amount about it, even though there are people that do. So what I'm gonna show you is the very basics to help you get some more color and saturation and get a more natural looking image straight from your log footage without using LUTs. So as you can see here in Final Cut Pro, I've already imported a couple of clips just from the previous video I made. This one here is filmed in S-Log2 on my Sony a7C. Now I use S-Log2 because the Sony a7C records in 8-bit color. However, if I had a camera that recorded in 10-bit color, I would use S-Log3. But for reasons I'm not gonna get into in this video, it's recorded in S-Log2. But this works no matter what log profile you use, whether it's S-Log2, S-Log3, C-Log on Canon, or even D-Log like this one here. As So I'm gonna show you a couple of different corrections using different log profiles. So this is filmed in D-Log on the DJI Air 2S. So as we mentioned before, log footage looks very gray, flat, and washed out. And you can see that here. There's no contrast, no saturation, no definition to the image. And what we're trying to do when we're color correcting is bring all of that information back into the image so it looks more pleasing to the eye. Now, the first thing you need to do when you are doing this is make sure your footage has been filmed correctly. When you're shooting in log, what you want to try and do is overexpose your image just a little bit. And what that does is it allows your camera to capture all the information in that shot that it needs to be able to, when you get into your editing software, give you everything you need to be able to create a great looking image. Now I usually try and overexpose by around about one stop. However, it depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes a it's a little bit less, but you can see how your exposure sits within your camera just by using the little exposure compensation dial at the bottom of the screen. On Sony, it looks just like a little plus or minus. And when you've shot all of your footage correctly, you can then stick it inside your editing software, in my case, Final Cut Pro. And I add all of my color corrections to an adjustment layer. I'm gonna use this base correction and I'm gonna drop it on top and just drag it across both of these. And I use an adjustment layer because it just makes it easier to make tweaks if I need to. I'm not actually adjusting the image which sits underneath. And if I needed to, I could just get rid of the adjustment layer and bring in another one or make tweaks as and when. First thing I'm gonna do is go to the base correction and then I'm gonna to go to LUT and drag on a custom LUT. No, I'm not doing that. We're not using LUTs, what am I doing? I'm so used to just dragging a LUT on top and making tweaks. So what we're gonna do is go over to the color corrections tab and I have it set here to use these color wheels and we have a few other options at the bottom. And I'm gonna click Command 7 and open up my waveforms. And what this shows is the shadows at the bottom, the highlights at the top, and we have the midtones in the middle and you can see all of the different saturation as well within the image using the RGB. So I'm just gonna separate this adjustment layer. 
So it's just for each clip. I might get rid of that one there. I'm going to click on this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just bring down the shadows for this image. And we want to get as close to zero as we can. If we go below zero, you'll see that it starts to form a flat line. And that is when the blacks within the image are starting to clip and you're losing all of the information. So what we want to do to get a nice exposure is you just want to get around about zero. And then with the highlights, we want to lift that to around about 100. Now again, as we go above that, you can see it starts to clip. That is exactly what you want to avoid. Sometimes I might go just a tad over 100 if I want to brighten it up quite a lot. And I think I will just for this because there is so much dynamic range within that image with the bright sky and the shadows within the leaves as well. And then what I would usually do is just bring down the mid tones slightly. And if you have clear skin tones within an image, which we don't really in this one, we do just a little bit, but what you want is your, your, your mid tones for your skin need to sit around 40 to 70 IRA. And that is around about here. So we have 41 and then your skin tones fit within there. So if you have a nice talking headshot, like we do with this of me talking to you right now, my skin tones are sat within 40 to 70. Once we've set the correct exposure, we then just want to bring in some saturation. So I'm going to just turn up the global saturations just like that. I'm going to push it quite far. And if I click command seven again and get rid of the graphs and then we hide that base correction, you can see already just by bringing the shadows down, the highlights up, adding a little bit of saturation, you can see the difference we have made to that image. And that pretty much is as easy as it is. That is a usable image. You can then go and add in a color grade on top if you wanted to, or if you needed to, you could just add in some more saturation into the highlights or the shadows as you wish. But I think that is actually a fairly nice looking image already. And there's not a huge amount more that we would need to do to it to correct. So we're gonna go over to this drone shot, which was filmed in D-Log and do exactly the same. I'm gonna open up command seven and then bring my shadows down to around about 100. I am gonna push the highlights just a little bit further on this one because the sky is very bright and we have enough dynamic range within the Air 2S to be able to show this sky. And it is 10 bit color as well, which means you can push and pull the colors just a little bit further. I'm just gonna bring the mid tones down just a little bit, just to create a little bit more contrast within these shadows from the clouds. And then I'm going to bring up the global saturation. We'll bring all those greens back in. I might just add a little bit into the mid tones as well. A little bit of saturation, just like that. Click command seven, and then we will hide these changes we made. And again, look at the difference that's made just by messing around with the shadows, the highlights and the saturation. That is a very nice, pleasing looking image. And we've got all of the dynamic range that log footage has captured, meaning that it just looks really nice and natural. We've not got anything clipping. So that is all color correction is. It is that easy to be able to correct your log footage to get a nice, normal looking image. And there is more to it. You can go way more in detail with it if you would like to and create some nice looks but then you can then go and go and color grade on top, as we mentioned, and just change the image and create that feel for the video that you would like to. You can then, if you want to, go and save this as a preset so you can then drag and drop that onto any clip and then make your tweaks from there. And that acts almost like a little bit of your own LUT from there. And yeah, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that, really. You can go into it as much in detail as you would like. It really doesn't have to be difficult to create a great looking image from your washed out gray log footage. As long as when you go back to filming it, you have filmed it correctly. It makes the editing process so much easier. So yeah, that is it for color corrections. If you'd like a video talking about the difference between color corrections and color grades, let me know in the comments below and I will get around to making that as well. And yeah, that's it for this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button on the channel if you like what you see. Come and say hello in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.